I'm going to talk about trip generation, really determining the um, impacts of the development on the transportation system, really. It's really, um, it's confusing at times, so um, we need to know exactly the size of the development and we need to know um, the uh, trips that are generated from that specific development. One of the um, methodology or the techniques that we use, it's the ITE trip generation and it's been updated to ninth, ninth edition. Okay, now let's get to determining the um, trip generated from um, um, a development. So what is a trip end? First, trip end, it's different than us, some of the traffic engineers going to the field and counting vehicles at the intersection. So this is different. We do not, we do look at the cars, but also we call it trip end. So what do we, how do we count the number of trips going in and out a driveway? A car going into a driveway, that's one trip, and a car leaving that establishment, that's another trip. So as you can see, this shows two trip ends. And how do we count these trip ends? Um, a tube is laid at the entrance of uh, land use or driveway. It counts the trips going in and it counts the trips going out. And as you can see, the counter shows the number of trips going in and out. So 550 trips going out as an example and 450 going out. So we have 1,000 trip ends all together. Now, so we know the trip ends now, so we need to know the um, land use. We, know to, we need to know the size of the land use, whether it's the square footage, whether it's a number of dwelling, whether it's number of employees. So we need to know those specific uh, independent variables in order to, to determine the uh, trip rates. All right, so we said we have 1,000 trip ends, and let's work with square footage at this moment. So this development is 10,000 a square foot, okay? And so what we do, we say 1,000 trip ends divided by 10, because IT methodology is based on 1,000, okay? So we say 1,000 divided by 10, that gives us 100 trip ends per 1,000 square foot. Okay, so now let's work with another independent value, which for this um, development is number of employees. Okay, so we said we have 1,000 trip ends, we have 50 employees. 1,000 divided by 50, that gives us 20 trips per employees. All right, let me ask you this question. Let's say a person drives around their city, make no stop and returns back home. So let's see how many trip ends we have. It is two trip ends. That's correct because right. the reason we say two trips, even though 70% did answer the right question, two trips, 22% said one trip. Um, it is two trips because you leave even though if you don't stop anywhere but you still have to go back, right? So that makes it two trips. So like I said, counting the vehicles, you know, uh, coming up with the daily traffic, it's different than counting the uh, trip ends for the purpose of trip generated from uh, any development. Like I said, IT, ha IT has many independent variables, okay? Um, um, you know, each development or each uh, land use code may have one or two independent variables. Um, so which one do we use? Okay, for instance, shopping centers has um, uh, gross leasable area. Office um, and other single land use has gross floor area, okay, or apartments, dwelling units, gas station, fueling positions, okay, so, you know, choosing the right variable, it's really important if we, it depending on the size of the development, um, so should I use number of uh, um, dwellings, should I use, for instance, for residential number of dwellings, for offices, should I use number of the uh, um, gross floor area or should I use number of employees? It all depends on the size of the development and really these independent values do have impact on the outcome. So um, what is a gross 
leasable area, let's say for shopping mall, it's the area that you're leasing to a tenant. Okay, that doesn't include parking area or common pedestrian area. But let's say for office building, we'll look at it as a gross floor area. It's the whole area, including closets, everything on that floor. For gas stations, you know, we look at fueling position. Fueling position, first of all, it's different than number of pumps. Okay, as you can see in this picture, we have four fueling positions. But as you can see, we have 12 pumps. So fueling position is different than number of pumps. Single uh, family detached housing, um, land use 210, comes from um, trip generation 9 edition. And as you can see, as the, again, we'll look at the uh, single family detached housing. That's a land use, the ITE land use code. And also there are, there is this independent variable, which is duality units. And also it's based on weekday as far as time period. And I mean, just for your own information, as you can see, a number of studies that they did was 351 to come up with this rate. And um, the, um, from those 351 studies, average number of dwelling units was 197. And as you can see, average rate for this land use code 210, it's 9.57. Remember this average rate, 9.57? 9.52, okay? That came from 9th edition. So this one, 9.7 is based on 8th edition. As you can see, there isn't much difference really on some of these um, average rates when ITE um, 9th edition was updated. By looking at this, this is uh, from ITE. Um, this shows the um, trip generated or the um, based on the independent variables. You can either use the average rate or you can use the equation. Again, it all depends on the size of the development. And there is guidance in the uh, ITE um, handbook. So um, as you can see, the dotted line is the average rate and the solid line, okay, that's the fitted curve. The um, number of dwelling is the uh, independent variables on the bottom. And then average vehicle trips or trip ends, it's the dependent variables. Let me just talk about this land use 820 shopping center in um, and the manual, it says um, the shopping center, the out parcels outside the shopping mall has an effect on the outcome, okay? They have collected data for this land use, but it doesn't tell us specifically which one of them have included the, these out parcels. So that was, um, you know, one critical issue that we really have to do more studying and see how which one of these land uses that have the out parcels included in there. Out parcels, as an example, could be a bank or, or um, um, for example, ice skating rink. Um, it's outside the uh, shopping center, but in the same area. All right, let's uh, look at one simple trip generation example. Okay, let's say we have or 10 homes being built. And let's say with these 10 homes being built, there is 10 daily trip generation rates for each single home. So how do we determine the impact or trip generation? So we have 10 homes being built and 10 trips are generated from each single family home. Now I know we made a big deal about you know cars coming in and cars coming out, but since the actual trip rates included the car coming in and car coming out, it is 100 trips. It's 10 times 10 and not 10 times 10 times 2. All right. Um, again, um, this is another example using the um, ITE land use code. This is apartment land use code 220. And by looking at average rate for apartment land use code 220, the average rate is 6.72. Okay. So let's do another example, which is very simple. Uh, we have someone who is proposing an apartment complex with 100 dwelling units. The average trip rate, 6.72, okay? So they are proposing 100 dwelling units, okay? So we have 100 dwelling units. 
times the average rate from ITE, and that determines the trips or the impacts from that trip uh, development, 672 trips. Mm -hmm.